Live from Bursa Malaysia, as I promised, Johan Mahmoud Marikan, CEO of uh, Talent Corp. Uh, I saw you scribbling um, flexible work arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Swami, mean, thank you. I think first thing I want to touch, I think the Prime Minister has obviously risen to the challenge of, on one hand, demonstrating the government's commitment to its responsible financial management. We have the GST, uh, we have the con continued reduction in the fiscal deficit, but at the same time still having the fiscal room to invest, promote and incentivize the key priority areas. And obviously, particularly from my perspective, the key priority area is human capital. And that's shown that, again, the government has put the largest allocation of, of it, the budget towards human capital, and it's shown right. in the 21 percent invested in human capital. Now, rather than going into the various areas which the government is investing, I think what's interesting about the budget is that the Prime Minister then is also articulating that human capital is not just the government's responsibility, it is really a shared responsibility with the private sector. And that responsibility just touch on three uh, key measures. The first one is in terms of the measure on HRDF, where 400 million has been set aside, where employers can provide the opportunities for employees to then in, invest or participate in upskilling or reskilling programs. So again, this you know if, if this enables our workforce to upgrade themselves towards our transformation of a high income uh, economy, and, and the measure also includes for apprentice and future workers. And so I think this is a key part of bringing the private sector into the game because education doesn't stop at school, we need to continue to upskill. The second measure, as you mentioned, was the flexible work, work arrangements. You know, again, Malaysia economy needs all the talent it needs and the private sector plays a key role in helping to retain the talent in our country. Now, we have an issue, particularly on, in terms of women in the workforce, where we have a female labour participation rate of 49.5%, which is actually the lowest in this region. And a lot of it, as the Prime Minister mentioned, is about this inability to balance work and life uh, commitment. Now, flexible work arrangements have been shown to work in various developed countries. For women, men too. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I think it should be taken by both men and women to share their responsibilities at, at home. But again, some people then say, no, it can't be done. Well, actually, you know, Talent Corporation together with the Ministry of Women have launched a website called flexworklife.my, yeah. where many leading corporations have put best practices to show it can be done in Malaysia. I'm very happy that the government prime minister has announced this incentive to then promote and accelerate adoption by Malaysian corporate sector to better enable our workforce, our talent to stay in the workforce, better enabling them to balance their work commitments and life commitments. The third one I just want to touch on, and it's interesting, um, is on this ESG index. The Prime Minister has announced that the Malaysia is launching an ESG in index. This is something that only really tends to be done in, in the US and Europe. I guess we must applaud Malaysia for taking leadership in the space. But interesting, it's about promoting listed companies that demonstrate sustainability. And as the Prime Minister mentions, sustainability is not just about the environment, it's also about demonstrating inclusiveness in the workplace. And he mentions gender, age, and ethnicity. Uh, and, you know, Malaysia's strength is its diversity and I'm very happy that the Prime Minister, the government, is effectively inviting the private sector to play its part really in promoting diversity, whether it's gender, ethnicity, age, to ensure that we have and able to optimise on Malaysian talent in order to advance the economy. Yes.